you wanted the best, you've got the best podcast. The hottest, hottest. podcast in the world. In the world. The Chris Voss Show, the preeminent podcast with guests so smart you may experience serious brain bleed. The CEOs, authors, thought leaders, visionaries, and motivators. Get ready, get ready. Strap yourself in. Keep your hands, arms, and legs inside the vehicle at all times. Because you're about to go on a monster education roller coaster with your brain. Now, here's your host, Chris Voss. Hi, folks. It's Voss here from thechrisvosshow.com. Well, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. When the Iron Lady sings it, that shrillness means the show has begun. Sometimes that just hits me, and it's like cold water being splashed into my face. On the Chris Voss Show, folks, for over 16 years, 2,000 episodes, we just hit our 16-year mark this August. Right now, 2024, we're old. I don't know what that means. Technically, we're teenagers, right? So that means we can still have fun. Anyway, guys, refer the show to your family, friends, relatives. Go to goodreads.com, forward slash Chris Voss, LinkedIn.com, forward slash Chris Voss. Chris Voss, one of the TikTok and all those crazy places on the internet. As always, we have the Tom Clancy authors on the show. We've had everybody on the show, I think, from the Tom Clancy series is written for it, except for Tom Clancy himself. I don't know why. We keep trying to book him on the show, but he never returns their emails. But there must be a reason why. But in Instead, we have returning guest M.P. Woodward, who's been on before for the latest installment in the Tom Clancy, Jack Ryan Jr. series. And the book is called Tom Clancy, Shadow State, a Jack Ryan Jr. novel out August 20th, 2024. There you go. So new book is out. In fact, I think we just had him on the show three or four months ago or so to talk about his other offerings and of course the the tom clancy book i think that was coming out of time i forget there's just so many of them i just can't keep up mp woodward is a veteran of both the u.s intelligent ops and the entertainment industry he was a naval intelligence officer with the u.s specific command he scripted scenario moves and counter moves for the u.s war game exercises in the middle east in multiple deployments to the persian gulf and far east he worked along Alongside U.S. Special Forces, CIA, and NSA. After leaving the Navy, he ran international distributing marketing for Amazon Prime Video. There you go. And uh, you can blame him for those commercials they're adding now. No, probably. He probably left before that. Anyway, he's a full time writer based in Washington State. How are you, Mr. Woodward? Great. And yeah, those ads weren't my idea. <laughs> Don't blame him. He was that was after he left. So yeah. there you go. Yeah, I I love the idea. What ads on? You know, I remember when they first came out with wire cutting. It's hey, you don't have to have cable anymore in those stupid ads. And you're like, sign me up. And now they're like, hey, have some ads, eh? Yeah. <laughs> you got to pay extra not to have as many ads. So anyway, so Mr. Woodward, give us your dot coms. Where can people find you on the interwebs? I am at uh, mpwoodward.com and mp underscore Woodward on Facebook. There you go. And I think we had you on for Dead Drop, your your other book yes. series. Dead Drop, which is right right here. Or that one just actually comes out August 20th as well in oh, really? paperback. Yeah. Oh, there you go. There yeah. you go. You're doing the double standard, double, uh, you're doing I the am. double I'm, plug. You know what? Since we're on video, I will hold up. Hold up. But there you go. Both there you go. August 20th. Paperback, hardback. There you go. So pick up his other works as well. Now, give us a 30,000 overview. What's in the new Tom Clancy Shadow State book? In the, in the Tom Clancy universe, as, as you mentioned, there are really two strains. There's the Tom Clancy Senior Books, which is about Jack Ryan, who is the president of the United States. And then there are the Jack Ryan Junior Books. And Junior is part of an organization called The Campus that's run by John Clark. And the campus does the does the stuff that we want to be deniable and off the books and can't be funded, and it's really self funded by a, uh-huh. by a private equity company called Henley Associates. Mm-hmm. And so there's white side operations that would be the private equity business, and black side operations. Mm-hmm. And when this book opens, Henley Associates is busy buying a rare earth mining company in Vietnam. And Jack is really leading the leading the investment. However, once he's there, he he more or less stumbles upon an, an a Chinese industrial espionage effort where they're trying to embed themselves in this uh, this mining concern 
and that will have deep national impl- national security implications for the country and especially for his father. Ah, there you go. Much much ado and 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 more about more about more about everything. <laughs> what, what was what was it like writing for this series this time? It was. I think there have been about twenty books put out under the Clancy name, and over the last ten years is really where this split happened between the senior and the, the junior books. So first off, I, I know the other authors fairly well. Don Bentley, who I think you had on the show before, mm-hmm. I was doing the junior series before me. He went off to do the Vince Flynn Mitch Rapp Legacy series, and that created this that created this opportunity. But I met with with Don several times, and we have the same editor at the Penguin Random House, and and these books are under the Putnam imprint, and and so we talked about where Jack and Jack Jr. and his character should go, and I also meet with Andrews and Wilson, the, the two guys that write the senior books, and so these books come out in sort of a TikTok fashion where it's senior, then junior, then senior, then junior. And we collaborate to the extent that we make sure that the the universe always makes sense, right? Yeah. So that, those that's kind of the, the 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 nuts and bolts of it. There you go. We yeah uh, we just had on Brian and Jeffrey yeah, in Brian May. And, and then we had Dawn on in June. And then in June we had Andrews and Wilson for theirs. And then, uh, yeah, we we just have, it's crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> Brian and Jeff, that, that's Andrews and Wilson. Same guys. Yeah, yeah. 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 So they, yeah, there's, uh, it's great that you guys sit down and powwow and make sure every, you know, all boats sail in the same direction there. <laughs> it's, I think it's super important for, for fans of the series and for readers that, that there's continuity in that, in that universe that, you know, a character doesn't say, oh, I don't know how to do that. When it's like, yeah, you do it three books ago. That's exactly what you did, right? So I think we all take that job very seriously, as we should. There you go. So tell us a little bit about how you grew up and and how you started writing for yourself. When did you know you were a writer, all that sort of stuff? I was inspired at a young age. I loved fiction as a young age. And for I don't know why my brain chemistry beats me, but I really liked historical fiction. And I liked U.S. history and military history. And, you know, re- read a lot of that kind of stuff that got me very interested in the, the, in writing and in the Navy in particular. And so as a young naval officer, I enjoyed, I don't know that I enjoyed, I attempted to write, to write a couple of, a couple of books, a couple of different ways. Didn't always work out because I didn't, didn't know what I was doing yet. And then got swept into industry and got really, really busy. And then COVID came around and I had more time on my hands and I, I returned to it being a little smarter after spending some time with prime video about how stories are told and, and then, and then, and then just had matured enough, I think, to be able to do it. Ah, there you go. There you go. The, when did you, when did you start writing your series? I think is the handler what you're known for that series? Yeah, the hand, the, the, I wrote the handler in 2020, late 2020 and it, and it launched in 22 and then Dead Drop came out last year, 23, and I'm working on more of those at the same time that I'm doing the, the Clancy books. There you go. I know we had you on in May 9th, 2022 for The Handler. Mm-hmm. And then I think we missed a book in between. We had you on. No, no, I was here. Yeah, I was here for Dead Drop. Yeah, you were here for Dead Drop. As I, I think The Handler has got a couple different covers, huh? Yes, it does. Various two. They, they changed the cover from the hardback to the to the paperback. There you go. That's why it looks different to me than than what I had. Because I was like, maybe I missed one. Because some some yeah. of you guys, you every three months, you guys are pumping. So there you go. What did you find mo- most interesting about writing for this version? Was there any sort of changes or maybe updates or add-ins that you you did that? Let's twist it a little bit and see if we can change the formula a little bit. Yeah, yeah, keep- absolutely. I wanted to. So Jack Ryan Jr. is this guy, son of the president of the United States successful in his own right in this private equity business, but also works with the campus on, 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 you know, dark operative kind of missions. And he's been trained by John Clark and Ding Chavez, etc. But because the earlier books, he was younger, he was maybe a little cockier and a little more impetuous and occasionally displayed judge, judgment that 
that you know was a little bit on the ready fire aim side of things and one of the things i wanted to do was to challenge him with having to balance multiple responsibilities and make bigger decisions where there are larger things at play and and his boss john clark had been pushing him to do just that so we get some of that in this story i also wanted to create a legacy for john clark who you know let's face it he was in the vietnam war so he's getting he's getting to be pretty old and i had him bring in a new recruit who is a seal master chief who got a, a raw a raw deal as he was leaving the service and i wanted to show clark interconnecting to a veteran seal like himself and bringing someone in to 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 help run the team going forward there you go there you go what do you think find the series is so enduring with people why do you think they really love it so much i think that anytime you create a genre which is what tom clancy really did back in the you know late 80s early 90s there hadn't been techno thrillers before that i guess the closest thing i can think of is you might have some stuff that's really really kind of far-fetched or fantastic like a clive Custler kind of book or you might have something that's real really science-based say michael crichton but clancy did he he kept the technology authentic and he also pulled back the currents or the curtains rather on the national security establishment to say look this is how this is not only the technology that these folks use but these are the ways that they make decisions or the way that they interact or consider things and those technical aspects were all very correct and i and i think that gave him worldwide fame it created an audience that was hungry for more of that there became many many imitators but because jack ryan himself as a character was also finally drawn as a good honorable person that that i i, I think people just want to return again and again to these stories mm -hmm. and and anything new technology wise or military wise that maybe you brought into the book from you know your experience of of being in the military and and some of the operations you were involved in yeah, I, 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 without without doing any spoilers, but one of the, the big technologies in the book up front, as I mentioned, it involves rare earth minerals, and rare earth minerals are then further refined into magnets. Magnets are critical to to generate an electric field, so in mm. electric cars and, and other things. And in in the in the book, there is a there is a technical breakthrough. That, that along with some other physical conversions helps to cancel out radar radio waves. Sort of the same way sound deadening works to counteract a sound wave to equal it out. The, this is fictitious, but I have a technology developed that effectively can turn other existing aircraft into stealth aircraft at a much you know leaner investment than, say, buying a new B-21 Raider bomber. Oh, and so that that's what that's that's and you know again I don't want to give away any spoilers but that's some of the technology that's involved up front and where the Chinese have targeted their industrial intelligence apparatus. Ah, there you go. I think you alluded a little bit to my next question. You guys often touch on geopolitical issues. How do you decide which current events to incorporate into the story? Or do you yeah yeah I. I very much, very much do because I think that's part of the the Tom Clancy brand. They they say there are those books that are ripped from the headlines, and then there are those books that predict the headlines. And I think readers want Clancy books to be closer to to the latter. In it's it's no great secret of the great power competition going on with 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 China, and where I came from in tech, both at a Taiwanese company as well as in just just broader tech. Uh, I saw a great a great deal of reliance on China in terms of the supply chain as well as uh, specific specific materials. And given the fact that right now most big heavy tech supply chains are, are looking for ways to decouple, that means to decouple from China, that means they're looking for other places to go where labor is relatively inexpensive, where there's plentiful minerals, materials, et cetera. And, and Vietnam is one of those, those obvious choices. So I thought it would be interesting to both 
play on the industrial espionage aspect of China, but also bring Vietnam in as a country with which the U.S. has a very complex history. Yeah, it's kind of interesting how things really change there. We do a lot of manufacturing and stuff there and supplies change stuff there. Yeah. And you think back, you know, I, I grew up, probably you, you know, we remember Vietnam and, and that whole kerfuffle and, and it didn't make anybody really happy. Let's put it that way. I mean, you know, they think of our, our two of the, two of our largest trading partners are Japan and Germany, right? So it's not unprecedented that countries with, you know, that we've gone to war with that, that, that we, turn around and can build a productive relationship in the future yeah it's i mean we did that with japan technically in after yeah. world war ii we we actually went in and rebuilt them which is kind of interesting how we did mm-hmm. this i think we kind of did or tried to do that with iraq and then eventually they're like get out of our country we're like thanks eh so there you go lots of interesting things happening in the world i mean the, the ukraine stuff is Really interesting. What are your thoughts on the Ukraine thing? I think it's brilliant what they've done by opening up. Basically, you know, Putin left the front door open to his country, figuring, I guess, we, I guess if we have them on their heels, they won't attack us, in, and we'll focus on all of our conscripts and ex- <laughs> all resources to the front line. And then the Ukrainians are like, sure, we'll just evade you too. I think, it, I think it's quite brilliant. What do you think? Yeah, I think that it's a... A, a strategic calculation on Ukraine's part because yeah. here they're, they're pushing into the, the Kursk region, which makes, you know, Putin look really, really bad, right? Oh, it it's does. a political yeah. liability to him, which I think that is the strategic calculation because from a military perspective, the challenge they're going to have is that the further they, they push in, the easier it is to, to cut them off and, and what, what looked like a very swift victory becomes an, an unsustainable one. But, uh, you know, they, they know that, too. So hopefully they've got good plans to, to, to maintain their gains and, and cause, that, cause some pain for the Russians. Yeah, evidently the soldiers and the military that the Russians are sending to them, the Ukrainians are seeing it coming. It's extraordinary to see the drone war. Like, I'm just enthralled with watching the drones in Ukraine, you know, kill Russians. Just these little freaking drones dropping grenades and shit. <laughs> <laughs> got multi-million yeah, and- dollar equipment. And, and I think the, the interesting thing about that is that on the one hand, it's low tech. On the other hand, it's high tech. And what I mean is on the low tech side, these, these are electrical components that, you know, they're, they're buying wherever, right? And, and putting together and saying, Let, let's go get them. But on the high tech side, though, we've never had ready access to bandwidth that's available throughout the world via Starlink. Mm-hmm. And so all of a sudden you have the, the low Earth orbit satellites circling the globe like a ball of yarn and providing high bandwidth to these drones that really need it, right? Need to stay connected the entire time. And I think it, that, that is something that I, a, a theme that I wanted to play with a little bit in this Clancy book, Shadow State, about the way that private industry and future conflicts and the interests of, of, of nations are all a little bit intertwined because so much innovation is happening on the private side that is instantly applicable to defense. Yeah, it's it's just crazy to freaking watch and everything else. So how do you how do you make sure that you keep the the, the pressure of meeting fans expectations expectations and of course, you know, making sure you stay within the lines they expect. How hard is that to do given the popularity of Tom Clancy's books? Well, we'll see how well I did. I, I certainly tried very, very hard. As a you know, somebody else said to me, "Oh, they're just waiting for you to put, you know, the wrong, <laughs> the wrong scope on the rifle." I, I, I think that. Well, so let me say that I took, I took it, I took it, and do take it very, very seriously, and work really hard to get that stuff right. The, the, the positive side is that, unlike when the original Tom Clancy books were written. You know, information is readily at our f- fingertips where we can verify that, yep, that is the right scope to go on the right rifle, et cetera. So there's the, the real world technical aspect, and then there's the continuity aspect to make sure that you're staying current with Tom Clancy characters. On the real world side, there's both the, you know, the internet can, can pull up all these things, but I also have a good network of, of guys, ex soldiers, a guy on this book that, that helped me quite a bit was a sergeant major in, in, in Delta Force. 
and you know guys like that know know it and a quick text message can fix you up on the continuity side as i mentioned i, I talked to, to don and the other the other authors i reread the old books and there are also a number of fan wikis out there that you can go and check oh, really yeah oh yeah there, there's a whole <laughs> there's a whole ryan verse that exists out there wow that is crazy you know, I've seen them do that with Star Wars. Like, I've saw, I saw a picture of the Millennium Falcon. Someone had designed the interior or something, and evidently there's no bathrooms on the they could find on the Millennium Falcon. I'm like, that's kind of weird. You just pee in space. A port somewhere that was yeah, just a space, I guess. Port yeah. in space. You just you know pull off on the side of the road like your you know your family used to do when you're driving those long distances. But actually, Star Wars is a pretty good example. I, I mean, the Clancy verse isn't. <laughs> quite as extensive as as star wars but my son was you know he did all the star wars legos like he he knew the entire lexicon etc and he read probably 20 star wars books that were written by authors who picked up this world and said okay here's the here's the story that you know fits within the within the rules that is wild that is wild so what's the future for the books are you signed up for a certain amount of run and then what's, what's the future for the yeah, yeah, we, I mean, we do we do contract multiple book contracts um mm -hmm. at, at a time so yeah i'm signed up to be doing these for for a while and and looking looking forward to that and i think what you'll see is the continued expansion of the junior line as the the next generation of of characters and you'll continue to see the broader military fiction in the in the senior line there you go. There you go. People love the series and they love your writing, so they're going to keep coming back. What's on the handler front? Anything over there on your work there? Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm finishing up a third one and hope to be back here. Probably be back here next year. Please hope come back. To talk yeah. about that. Yeah. yeah. We'd love to have you talk about it keep the series going so thank you very much mr woodruff for coming on the show we really appreciate it. give your show.com so people can find you on the interwebs yeah it's mpwoodward.com there you go thanks for everyone for tuning in thanks to my honest for being here as always go to goodreads.com for chess chris foss linkedin.com for chess chris foss chris foss one the tiktokity and all those crazy places on the internet be good to each other stay safe we'll see you guys next time and that's